Yellowstone supervolcano deformation. How a top USGS geologist recorded a lot of movement in the caldera's uplift. And we'll hear him how he explains that, having to do with the monitoring of it. This is by Callum Hoare of Express UK. Yellowstone supervolcano caldera last erupted 70,000 years ago. It's been labeled a supervolcano due to the potential to inflict devastation on a global level. There has not been an eruption of this nature in more than, well, 630,000 years, and then we have the other one, 70,000 years. But scientists believe it's possible uh, to, uh, for it to be posing a threat now. The scientist you will be hearing is Jacob Lowenstein. What you, what you get here, here is, is uh, uh, it's like, it's a, like contour a contour map. map. So, so any, any yellow, yellow ring, ring, for example, is going to represent, represent areas that moved up, up a similar amount towards, towards the satellite, satellite during, during that time, time period. period. Same, Same goes for this yellow, yellow ring or this pink ring. And when, and when the, the rings are really close together, together that means that there's, that there's a lot of movement in that, in that particular, particular area. area. So here, so here in this, this 1996-2003, there was about 12 centimeters of uplift over that time period, period something, something like this amount, amount over you know, a, you know, a, a very, a very large, large area, about five, five miles across. across. So, that's so that's a lot of volume, volume increase. And it, and it, and it and dies off when you get to this area out here, sort of in the middle of the gold there. So this, so this is another way, way instead, instead of just looking at that spot and that spot and that spot with GPS, GPS you, might you might sort of get a feel of what's happening. You look, you look at a map like, like this and you really get an understanding of sort of on a map view what's happening, what's happening where, is where is the ground deforming and where is it moving. Okay, that was a USGS video where he was explaining. This was from 2014 when he had this huge lecture having to do with Yellowstone details and data. Jacob Lowenstein, leading scientist geologist in charge of monitoring Yellowstone, and he revealed during his lecture at Menlo Park, California, how the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory recorded an uprise arising in the ground over the seven year period. This was what he said back in 2014. He said, We have a technique that's called INSAR, I N S A R. It's another satellite-based technique like a GPS. And it produces this particular image. It's called an interferogram. INSAR is a radar technique, and you have radar up in space, and it's taking an image of the land surface below, scanning the surface. And these are similar to what we see the uh, various telescopes taking of uh, planets in our solar system. Anyway, the map shows an uplift in the Yellowstone Park, uh, right, the, actually this uplift is in the lake and the edge of it, the north, uh, the uh, southwestern part of it is in the center of the lake, as you can see. You take an image, he says, and compare it, in this case 1996 to 2003, and you can look at how the ground surface changed in elevation relative to that satellite image. Dr. Lowenstein then showed a map where a number of rings appeared to get closer near the caldera. <clears throat> and he added, what you get there is like a contour map, the yellow ring representing places that move up a similar amount towards the satellite. But when the rings are really close together, that means there was a lot of movement. Here we can see from 1996 to 2003, there was about 12 centimeters of uplift in that period over a five mile radius. This is a large volume increase uh, when you have those uh, the rise over that tremendous amount of area, 12 centimeters over that whole area. He says this is a large volume increase but it does dies off when you get to the outer areas. This gives us an understanding of what is really happening, where the ground is moving and where it's coming up. Lowenstein uh, revealed why this is important to keep an eye on Yellowstone. He says during the same lecture, Yellowstone has a lot going on it. It's, very, it's a very active place. We have a volcano observatory there, partly because we feel we need to keep a close eye on it because it does have this big hazard. That's a possibility there. There is no place on Earth that's quite like Yellowstone. 
It is a big magma system and there are constantly things happening. Let's remember that uh, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was only put there, it was only established there in 2001. And it happened after a 2000 documentary, on a, I think it was a British documentary having to do with Yellowstone, past eruptions and any future eruptions and how devastating that would be to humanity. And after that uh, 2000 video came out, that's when the government decided to open up the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory there to have one there permanently. So Lowenstein went on to uh, reveal that uh, you have to monitor dirt because uh, it helps understand it's the biggest and most uh, significant supervolcano in the world. And it's important to keep an eye out on what's going on. He says, because what we learn at Yellowstone really teaches a lot about volcanoes everywhere. A lot of volcanoes don't do anything. They sit there having no activity at all until about two weeks before they erupt. At Yellowstone, we're constantly seeing activity, even though it hasn't erupted for over 70,000 years. He did go on in the same lecture, which was, which was quite long, uh, to say that it does erupt very frequently and that we are uh, overdue for an eruption by about 10,000 years. And he says that we have had about, uh, well, every time I hear it, the number goes up, but last time I, I heard him say it was 80 eruptions since then, since the 70,000 years passed. We had 80 eruptions, which means that uh, it's more than one eruption every 10,000 years. In the meantime, we've been having quick swarms, and recently, just yesterday that is, we've had in the middle of Yellowstone Lake, uh, a, a couple of quakes, and uh, as we know, the Yellowstone Lake is right on top of the magma chamber, which is on uh, top of a magma plume. And uh, that's why the video before that video before this one on the Yellowstone, you'll see that they're very concerned about the fact that they're having quakes in the center of the lake because that means that that's the uh, roof of the magma, something is happening there. Also, we've had a number of quakes again. They've been rocking continually in the area of, um, excuse, the, the area of uh, uh, Old Faithful Geyser as well. That's a swarm going on there. Uh, I'll leave the link to the Ber Sizemo Berkeley map because it's a beautiful map, very nice to look at and uh, it has small and big earthquakes and uh, that was, was that that was Yellowstone, that was Old Faithful just me saying, let's see who that is, yeah that's Old Faithful and I made a mistake, what about the other one? the other one is in Montana I think is that again Old Faithful, what is that? yeah, okay uh, the area of uh, about 16 kilometers north northeast of Old Faithful just around the area, all around uh, Old Faithful, you'll see on the map, uh, has quake swarms. And while you're looking, you can pan out and see what's happening along the Rocky Mountain Range. That's where Yellowstone National Park is, the uh, supervolcano. And around Montana, all the way through Yellowstone, all the way down towards Salt Lake City, is full of earthquakes. But and while you're there, you can watch, see what happens around uh, the Long Valley Caldera area. That is totally, totally active. And uh, there are a lot of people that believe that if anything goes up, and it may be way, quite frequent, uh, quite near, is lo the Long Valley Caldera around the area of the Mono Inyo craters. And that it would be a volcanic eruption, most likely like we saw, uh, what we saw in Kilauea. So uh, I'll leave a link below for that. You can uh, have that open as a tab to see what goes on there every day if you'd like. There's a lot of activity going there. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. 
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.